again, again, paalala lang. Yung ating PowerPoint nasa, yung ating PowerPoint ay nasa ano, canvas. Just go to the discussions tab and then look for chapter 4, lecture, PowerPoint, and worksheet. Okay. So now let's talk about chapter 4, electrolyte effect. So this will be the last coverage for your midterm examination. Okay. So for chapter 4, uh, we will be discussing things that are uh, no, that are quite different from what we learned. No? Uh, what we learned in equilibrium is that in sa dulo, yung sinabi ko, yung common ion effect, no? So, when we add ions that are common to your solution, it shifts the equilibrium to the left, no? Because of the presence of the products, no? Since may mga products nang na-form, then the equilibrium is shifted to the left, no? Yun yung effect ng common ion. For this session, we will discuss its counterpart, no? yung kabaliktara ng common ion effect, no? and that is the salt effect or the diverse ion effect. Okay, so pag-usapan natin bakit siya different, no? Okay, so and this is actually a relatively new knowledge, no? So this was just discovered around 1930s, no? So yeah. So for our discussion today, uh, the following are and the following are the topics to be covered. No? So we will discuss hydrated ion and its effect with inequilibrium, ionic strength, activities and activity coefficient, properties of the activity coefficient, and how to calculate for the activity coefficient with the Debye-Uckel equation and its application to some equilibrium problems. Okay. okay. So let's talk about ions so how are ions formed no so generally you can form ions when you dissolve your ionic compound no? so kapag naglagay ka ng ionic compound sa water it becomes a hydrated ion okay so for example we have sodium chloride here pag nilagay mo yun in water it becomes sodium ion and chloride ions no so, ang ating ions, meron siyang hydration sphere. No? So, hydration sphere, ibig sabihin nun, meron yung area in 3D space in which water attaches to the ion. Okay? So, remember the intermolecular forces, ang magpe-play mag ng role dito ay yung ion-dipole interaction. Okay? So, bakit? Kasi ang water natin, dipole yan, it has a partial negative and a partial positive charge, di ba? And ito, may ions tayo. What will happen? Those charges will interact, no? So that water will hydrate the ion, no? So, yung tubig, papalibutan niya yung ion. So, for example, for Na+, the oxygen will be pointing towards the sodium, Okay. So, yan. No? Kunwari, yan. Ito yung water molecules. Yung oxygen niya nakapoint towards sodium. However, for chlorides, since negative yan, ito yung partial positive end yung kakabit sa kanya. Okay? So, ito yung mga water molecules that are uh, attached to chlorine. Okay? So, yan. The area that the area na may tubig around the ion that is called the hydration sphere no and the hydration sphere differs no uh, depending on the charge of the ion or depending on the molecular size of the ion the hydration sphere varies no kapag malaki yung ion eh, di mas malaki yung hydration sphere pag mas malaki yung charge niya mas malaki yung hydration sphere no so ganun Basahin natin to. So, ions and molecules in a solution are surrounded by an organized sheath of solvent molecules. So, yun nga yung idea dito that when you dissolve your ionic compounds, nagkakaroon tayo ng hydration sphere wherein andon yung water molecules attached to the ions. Smaller 
more highly charged ions bind more water molecules and behave as larger species in the solution. Okay. So, ano lang yun? Ayun nga, yung sinabi ko kanina na iba-iba yung size ng ion, na, depending on their charge or their molecular size. The activity of aqueous ions is related to the size of the hydrated species. Na. So, ibig sabihin, yung behavior ng ating ions, it depends on the size of our hydrated spheres. Na. Okay, so, yun yung pag-uusapan natin today. Okay? So, Punta tayo sa mga observations that includes the idea about hydration spheres. Na. So, pag-usapan natin itong unang observation. This was done uh, in 1999 by R.J. Stulzberg. So, ito yung publication niya. Discovering a change in equilibrium constant with change of ionic thread. Na. And that was published in the Journal of Chemical Education in 1999. Na. So, one year after ako ipanganak and lumabas siya. Okay. So, what happens here? Okay. So, I think observation nila. Okay. So, suppose you have an equilibrium system. What will happen if you add common ions? Nare, naglagay ka ng ions na product. It will shift the equilibrium to the left. No? So, ibig sabihin, may shifting of the equilibrium when you add ions that are common to your equilibrium system. No? Nari, nag-add ka ng iron 3 plus, it will shift the equilibrium to the right. Nag-add ka ng thiocyanate ion, it will shift the equilibrium to the right. If you add this ion, it will shift the equilibrium to the left. And that's true naman. Why? Bakit nagkakaroon ng shift sa equilibrium? Because yung concentration ng species na dinagdag mo, they are included no, sa equilibrium constant. And since ilalagay mo sila sa equilibrium constant, magbabago talaga yung equilibrium constant. Okay? So nagkakaroon ng shifting. Okay? Pero ganito yung napansin nila. Okay? They added inert salts, no? Uh, one of the common inert salt ay potassium nitrate. Ano meaning kapag sinabing inert? No? Ibig sabihin, it does not chemically react with other species. No? So, one of the best species no, na pwede ilagay sa mga ganyan solution ay yung potassium nitrate. Because potassium and nitrate ions, they do not react with other ions. Readily soluble sila. Okay? So, pag naglagay daw sila ng potassium nitrate in the solution, what happens is that the equilibrium is shifted despite being not a part of the equilibrium equation. Di ba ang weird? Bakit? If you write the equilibrium constant for this reaction, ito yon. Asan dyan yung potassium ion and nitrate ion? Wala. Pero... Of experimentally speaking, so this is the rate, uh, no, this is the graph of the reaction quotient and the molarity of potassium nitrate added. Okay, so nangyayari daw, kapag nag-add ka ng ibang ion sa iyong equilibrium species, the reaction quotient or the equilibrium constant is being shifted. No? Nagbabago siya over time, no? depending to the left to the right, no? So, ganun daw yung nangyayari. Nagtataka sila. Why? Why are inner salts affecting the equilibrium constant although they are not included in the equation? Kasi kapag included in the equation, madali lang sagutin eh. Common ion effect yun. Pero kapag wala dyan sa equation, they don't know yet. No? Hindi nila lang paano yan nangyayari. And here's another observation. Okay. So, Suppose you have a calcium sulfate, and that is a precipitate. No? Kulay puti yan. No? Kunwari, you have a test tube containing a car calcium sulfate precipitate. What they notice is that when you add inert ions, pag naglagay ka ng potassium nitrate dun sa solution ng, pot ano, ng calcium sulfate, what happens is nababawasan yung precipitate. Okay? Umuunti yung kulay puti sa solution when you add inert ions. So that means... Yung ating precipitates, they are more soluble in solution with inert ions or with inert salts. So, bakit ulit? 
kasi kung titignan nyo, if we have this equilibrium system for calcium sulfate, this is the KSP expression. Again, KSP is the um, equilibrium constant for precipitates. No? So how do we write the KSP for this reaction? That will be the concentration of calcium 2 plus times the concentration of sulfate ions. Okay. So this is the this is KSP. Uh, again, yung KSP that is the equilibrium constant for precipitates. No? That's solubility product constant. So yan. So imagine yun na no? wala namang potassium and nitrate ions sa KSP natin. Sa K ng ating precipitate. Wala naman yun doon. However, the equilibrium is shifted. Nagbabago yung equilibrium. Okay? So, yun yung pinagtataka nila. So, in general, adding inert salt to a sparingly soluble salt, so, ibig sabihin, precipitate, it increases the solubility of the precipitate. No? So, doon sila nagtataka. Bakit? No? Why is equilibrium affected when you add inert salts? No? So that is experimentally observed and you can that you can actually do that no once na nasa lab na tayo hopefully by next year na no? okay so ganun yun yung nagtataka sila ito yung explanation daw okay so remember that we have hydrated species no so ibig sabihin yung ating ions may hydration sphere yan punta tayo sa precipitate mismo so, what happens sa precipitate is ganito. Suppose we have the calcium and the sulfate ions. Okay? So, suppose this is the calcium ion. Calcium 2 plus, And then this is the sulfate ion. Okay? So, calcium 2 plus sulfate ion. Okay? So, suppose we have these ions no, produced by our salt. No, yung calcium sulfate. So, you have a calcium sphere and the sulfate sphere. Bakit sila nagiging precipitate in the first place? Okay. So, the reason why they become precipitate is that they stick together. No? Yung kanilang hydration sphere, pag nagdikit sila, mamumuo sila. No? Mag-join for sila para maging solid ulit. Okay. So, ganun yung nangyayari. Okay. Without any external presence, uh, without any external salts, what happens is that yung calcium sphere, pati yung sulfate sphere, pag nagdikit uli sila, mamumuo uli sila, magiging precipitate uli sila. Okay? So that was the idea. No? That when we have um, precipitates, yung ions nila, pag nagdikit yung dalawang ions na yan, mamumuo yan. Pero bakit sila naging more soluble when you add other species? Okay. Pa bakit sila naging more soluble nung naglagay tayo ng potassium nitrate? Kaya sabi dito eh. Ganito daw kasi nangyari. Ganito yung observation. So, suppose you add potassium nitrate ions, bali nagkaroon ka ng additional ions sa solution mo. So what happens is that instead of calcium and sulfate ions coming back together, to form the precipitate, what happens is that yung ating potassium nitrate, our inert ions, they serve as extra barriers to prevent them from coming back. Okay. So parang ito yung, parang yung potassium nitrate, ito yung friend nyo na, kunwari, may kipagbalikan ka sa ex mo. Sila yung friend mo na sasabihin, uy, wag na, wag na, no. Okay, bad yan, no? ganun. So, parang ganun yung role nila here, no. So, suppose itong calcium and sulfate ion, di ba naghiwalay na sila. Then, pag nakita sila, babalik uli sila. So, our potassium nitrate ions prevents that from happening. That's why the equilibrium is shifted. That's why they become more soluble. Paano? Okay, so si potassium, remember, potassium is a positively charged ion. So, gagawin niya yung potassium, iikutan niya itong sulfate. No? Papalibutan niya yung sulfate ion. Okay? So, papalibutan niya yung sulfate ion. At the same time, yung ating nitrate ion, negatively charged yun, papalibutan naman niya yung calcium. Okay? So, what will happen? 
So because of this extra barrier between calcium and sulfate, since napalibutan na sila ng diverse ions, they will no longer stick together. Okay? So that means they will be more soluble when you add diverse ions. And that's how diverse ions shift the equilibrium. No? What happens is that diverse ions, they surround the ions that are included in the equilibrium constant. No? Pinapalibutan nila yung ions that play role sa equilibrium constant. And as a result, by that shielding, nagbabago yung ratio ng equilibrium constant. Okay? So, hindi siya obvious when you look at the equilibrium expressions. Pero, on a molecular level, this is what they do. Okay? So, pinapalibutan kasi nila yung ions to prevent them from sticking together. And as they prevent them from sticking together, the equilibrium shifts. No? Either way. No? Pero for salts, it shifts to the right. Okay? So, in lang yung idea. Imagine nyo na lang kapag ganito yung explanation, yung calcium and yung sulfate, yan kayo yung X nyo. Naghiwalay kayo, naging ions kayo. Then, instead na bumalik kayo sa isa't isa, ang ginawa ng mga friends mo, may mga nireto siyang ibang ions. So, si calcium, niretuhan siya ng friend niya ng nitrate para ma-distract. Si sulfate, niretuhan siya ng friends niya ng potassium. Okay? So, para ma-distract. So, instead of them coming back together, what happens is that nag-entertain na lang sila ng ibang ions. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyayari dito. So, when ionic compounds dissolve in water, they are surrounded by ionic atmosphere. The presence of inert ions partially offset the charge of the cations and anions, preventing them to stick together again. Okay? So, ibig sabihin... Hindi na magkakabit uli yung calcium and sulfate so that the precipitate will be more soluble. Okay? So, yun yung explanation why this happens. No? So, when you add inert salt, the equilibrium is shifted. No? Bakit? Kasi yung ating inert salt, they surround the species that are involved in the equilibrium constant. No? And as they surround the ions included in the equilibrium constant, nashishift siya to the right no? for our precipitates. No? Kasi hindi na sila nagsasama uli. No? Hindi na sila bumabalik as salts. Uh, yeah. Hindi na sila bumabalik as precipitates. No? Kasi distracted na sila or the charges are offset. No? So, hindi na sila magdedicate. Okay? So, yun yung kwento ng ionic strength. No? The more diverse ions you have, the more distractions for your species no? from coming back together. No? So, mas maraming manggugulo sa process nila ng pagbabalikan. So, hindi na nila gagawin yan kasi may iba na silang ions eh, na kapartner. Okay? So, that's the reason why Diverse ions affect the equilibrium. Wala siya, wala siya sa equilibrium constant, pero on a molecular basis, na-observe no natin yan. So, ano yung conclusion natin dito? So, this phenomena is called the salt effect or the electrolyte effect, no? or aka the diverse ion effect. No? And ito yung isa sa mga video ko sa YouTube na until now malakas na napanood siya ng mga Indian. Siyempre, uh, nakakatawa. Indian yun eh. Diba, usually tayo nanonood sa Indian. Ngayon, baliktad. <laughs> okay? So, konti lang kasi yung ganito ang discussion sa YouTube. Okay? So, let's recall what happened. So, ito yung ating curve, no? So, ito yung graph, no? Ito yung situations natin. So, when we have higher ionic activity, ibig sabihin marami kang diverse ions no, na nilagay sa iyong solution, it means that more ions will diffuse in the ionic atmosphere. Okay, so ano yun? Ito yun, yung drinowing ko. Kapag mas marami kang diverse ion, mas maraming ion yung papalibot sa ionic sphere. No? So, mas maraming yung papasok sa ionic sphere. Then what will happen? That will lessen the charge of the ions in the solution. Diba? Ito yung sabi dito. Pag may presence ka ng diverse ions, malalesan yung charge niya 
that prevents them from coming back. No? And that means less attraction for sparingly soluble salt. Ayun na nga. Since may other ions ka na, na nakalagay dyan, humina na sila, hindi na sila magbabalikan. Okay? So that means they will be more, uh, less yung attraction nila as a result, less yung precipitate then or more soluble na sila. Okay? So again, let's recall ano nangyari. Nataas yung ano, ionic activity. You introduce diverse ions. So, because you have diverse ions, more ions will diffuse in the ionic atmosphere. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yung mga diverse ions, papasok sila sa ionic atmosphere ng ating original ions. And as a result, less yung charge na nila. So, mababawasan yung lakas nila, no? yung strength ng kanilang charge because of these diverse ions around them. So, since mahina na sila, hindi na sila magbabalikan. So, there will be less attraction. As a result, less precipitate yung mafoform. No, ibig sabihin, the solution will be soluble na. Okay? So, tataas na yung solubility niya. And that is observed, no? Looking at this publication in 1998, ito, year na pinanganak ako, by C.J. Mar... Marzacco, effects of salt and non-electrolytes on the solubility of potassium by tartrate. It was published in Journal of Chemical Education. So in this graph, we can see we have a potassium tartrate precipitate. Okay. And naglagay siya ng mga ions. No? Naglagay siya ng magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride, glucose, potassium chloride. No? And as you can see, the equilibrium is shifted, no? Or the solubility is shifted, no? So, tignan natin. Explain natin bakit ganyan yung graph for each ions added, okay? So, tignan natin, magnesium sulfate. What happens when you add magnesium sulfate to this solution? The solubility increases. When you say solubility increases, is increased, that means the reaction is shifted to the right. Okay? So, the, the reaction is shifted to the right when we say the solubility increases. So, bakit kaya yung solubility nag increase when you add magnesium sulfate dito? Ano explanation dyan? Diverse ion effect, no? So, magnesium ion is not here. Sulfate ion is not here. But since it shifts the equilibrium to the right, Ibig sabihin, this is governed by diverse ion uh, diverse ion effect, okay? Or the salt effect. Okay, so ito, wala to sa equilibrium, pero since shifted siya to the right, diverse ion effect yung reason dyan. Okay, so nangyayari yung magnesium, pinapalibutan tong tartrate ion, yung sulfate, pinapalibutan yung potassium ion, and as a result, hindi na sila nagsasama. So, that means the equilibrium is shifted to the right. So, instead of forming precipitate, hindi na. It, they form the products na. The soluble products. Okay? So, yun. So, yun yung diverse ion effect. Uh, look at sodium chloride. When sodium chloride is added to this precipitate, what happens? The solubility also increases. Okay? It is also shifted to the right. Ano explanation dyan? Diverse ion effect. Okay. So, what happens? Yung sodium, pinapalibutan na itong tartrate ion. Yung chloride, pinapalibutan yung Cl. And as a result, ano nangyayari? Hindi na sila nagsasama uli to form the reactant. Na. Hindi na sila nagsasama uli. Instead, they become products na lang. Or, they become more soluble na lang. Okay? How about glucose? As you can see, the graph states na for glucose, it is flat. No? Walang nangyayari when you add glucose to your ions. Bakit? Ang sagot ay, glucose is not an ionic species kasi. No? Hindi siya ionic species. Wala siyang charge eh. So, ibig sabihin, kapag walang charge, walang effect yun dito. Okay. So, recall, yung may mga charge lang yung focus tayo, no? Eh, yung glucose, C6H12O6 lang yan. Wala yan charge, no? So, you sabihin, it will not affect, no? It will not do the diverse ion effect, no? Wala siyang gagawin. 
magiging matamis lang yung solution. How about potassium chloride? Well, look at potassium chloride. What happens when you add potassium chloride to your so, uh, equilibrium? The solubility of potassium uh, by tartrate decreases. Bakit bumababa yun? Uh, look at the equilibrium. Andong kasi yung potassium? And it is governed by the common ion effect. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyayari kasi. So, when you add potassium chloride, the solubility will decrease because of the presence of potassium ions. No? Uh, they, ano naman to? Common ion effect na. Uh, since naglalagay ka ng potassium, it will shift the reaction to the left. Okay? Basta ang species mo na sa equilibrium, common ion effect yun. So, it will shift the equilibrium to the left or the precipitate will be more, ano, uh, there will be more precipitate. No? So, ganun. Or the precipitate will be less soluble. Okay? So, again, paano uli nangyari yun? Um, so, paano uli nangyari yun? Because of this phenomena. No? Yung pagpalibot ng ating diverse ions sa ionic spheres. That prevents the ions from sticking together. And since prevented na yung pag-comeback nila, that means less precipitate will be formed or it will be more soluble. Or the equilibrium is shifted to the right. Okay? So, ganun na yung phenomena natin. So, how do we calculate for... Ang calculate agad, no? How do we calculate for the ionic strength? No? Siyempre, quantitative chem tayo, eh. No? Analytical chem tayo. So, kailangan may measurement. So, we measure the ionic strength no, as the total concentration of ions in the solution, specifically yung mga diverse ions. The more highly charged an ion, the more it is counted. Okay? So, the equation is here. So, that's mu equals one half of the sum of the charge times the molarity. The charge is squared. Okay? So, yan. So, again, ionic strength, ang equation niya ay one half sum of the product ng molarity and the charge of the ion squared. Okay. So, ipag multiply lang natin yan, then we add them and divide them by two. We will get the ionic strength. Remember, the higher the ionic strength, the more it affects the equilibrium system. Okay. So, the more na the dami yung diverse ions mo. That means the more shifted your equilibrium is now. Okay. So, let's try to solve for the ionic strengths of the following solutions. So, suppose we have 0 0.1 molar sodium nitrate solution. What's the ionic strength? Okay. Well, recall, ionic strength can be calculated as mu equals one half the sum of the molarity times the charge squared na. Okay. So, let's have number one. 0 0.1 molar sodium nitrate. What happens when you have sodium nitrate sa solution? Uh, yan ay salt. No? So, it will dissociate. Ano yung magiging ions from sodium nitrate? We will have sodium plus ion and nitrate ions. Okay. So, what will be the molarity of sodium ion and nitrate ion? And that can be computed by stoichiometry. Okay. So, kapag 1 is to 1 yung kanilang coefficient, the molarity of sodium nitrate will be equal to the molarity of sodium. Okay? So, stoichiometry na lang to. Kung 0.1 to, 0.1 din to. Bakit? Pareha sila ng coefficient na 1. Okay? So, kung 0 0.1 yan, that means sodium plus is 0 0.1 molar. And at the same time, nitrate ion is also 0 0.1 molar because of their stoichiometry. So, ito na yung ating magiging concentration ng ions. No? So, 0.1 to, 0.1 yun, 0.1 din yan. Okay? So, let's calculate for the ionic strength. So, sabi natin, mu is 1 half the charge squared times the molarity of your ions. 
Ano yung ions natin dito? We have sodium, we have nitrate. No? So, ilista natin. Mu is equals to 1 half. Uh, molarity ng sodium. Sulat natin. Times yung charge ng sodium. Yung Z ng sodium ion squared. Plus, ano pa yung isang ion? Yung nitrate. So, we have here, oops, naurong. We have here the nitrate ions times its charge squared. Okay? So, ganito lang yung meaning ng equation na yan. You just add the molarity of your ions times its charge squared. Now, ngayon, na-plug in na tayo. It's the molarity of sodium. Ang sabi doon, 0.1. So, lagay mo 0.1 molar. What's the charge of the sodium ion? Ano yung charge ng Na plus? E di positive 1. So, lagay mo lang dyan, positive 1 squared. How about the molarity of nitrate ion? So, that is 0.1 according to stoichiometry. And what's the charge of nitrate ion? Negative 1. So, that's negative 1 squared. So, let's solve for mu. Uh, what's 1 squared? At the 1. What's negative 1 squared? Also 1. So, ibig sabihin, we have 0.1 plus 0.1. So, that will be 0 0.2. And you divide it by 2, you get 0 0.1 molar. So, that is the ionic strength for this solution. So, points for 0 0.1 molar sodium nitrate solution, the ionic strength is 0 0.1 molar. Mamaya pa ito mag-make sense. No? Nagka-calculate pa lang tayo. Eh. Okay. So, yan. So, bago tayo pumunta sa application na ito, dito muna tayo. Okay. So, that's how you calculate for ionic strength. No? Let's try the second one. Um, Barahin ko lang. Let's have the second one. Okay, so we have 0 0.1 molar sodium sulfate. When you have sodium sulfate, it will dissociate into 2 moles of sodium ion and 1 sulfate ion. Uh, remember their charges. No, sana kabisado nyo na. Okay, last time pa yan eh. Okay, so what happens when you dissolve, dissolve sodium sulfate? It produces 2 moles of sodium ion and a sulfate an ion. Okay? So saan ang galing yung 2? Ayun. Yung subscript ni sodium. Okay, bakit nga ba may 2 doon? Okay, uh, balik ulit tayo sa in-org chem. Uh, remember yung crisscrossing... Okay. Para maging balance yung charges, yung 2 lalagay mo sa baba, yung 1 lalagay mo lang doon. So as a result, meron kang Na2SO4. Okay? Para ma-cancel out yung charges, kailangan mo ng dalawang sodium at isang sulfate. No? Okay. So ginawa lang natin yung kabaliktaran. So we have the salt, ginawa natin siyang ions. Okay? So ganun lang. Okay. Uh, again, let's determine their Molarities. No? So, if we have 0 0.1 molar of this solution, what is the molarity of sodium ion? That can be determined by stoichiometry. So, since ang coefficient dito ay 2, that means the molarity is twice the original molarity. Times 2 lang yung molarity dito. That will be 0 0.2 molar. About sulfate ions... Same lang siya as data. Bakit same lang? Kasi yung coefficients nila ay parehas na 1. Okay. So, ganun. Kapag may coefficient na 2 times 2, pag walang coefficient, edi 1 lang. Okay. So, yan. So, so once, we dissolve, uh, once we dissolve this ion, we will get 0.2 molar of sodium ions and 0.1 molar of Sulfate ions. So let's determine the ionic strength. Uh, that's mu equals one half. 
the molarity of sodium times its charge squared plus molarity of sulfate ion times its charge squared. What's the molarity of sodium? 0 0.2 molar times what's its charge? Positive 1 yung charge niya, then square. At the 1 pa rin. 1 squared is 1. How about sulfate ion? So we have 0 0.1 molar times, and what's the charge? Negative 2 squared. Okay. Uh, solve, solve na natin yung mu. So mu is equals to 1 half. Uh, what's... 0 0.2 times 1 squared at 0 0.2 molar lang din yan. About this one, 0 0.1 times negative 2 squared. What's negative 2 squared? 4 times 0 0.1 at 0 0.4. Okay. And this will be equal to 0 0.03 molar na. Bakit? Kasi... Ay, but 0.03, o nga pala. That will just be 0 .0, 0, 0 0.3 molar. Okay. Bakit naging ganon? Kasi 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 is 0 0.6 divided by 2, you get 0 0.3 molar. So this is the ionic strength of the second solution. Okay. So that's the ionic strength of this solution. Uh, last one. We have 0.2 molar potassium bromide and 0.01 molar sodium sulfate. Okay, so let's determine the ionic strengths. Burahin ko na. Okay, so we have two ions. Oh, sir, paano yan? Adi, ganun pa rin naman. Ganun pa rin. Same process. So, you have 0 0.02 molar potassium bromide. Siyempre, it will dissociate into potassium and bromide ions. What will be the molarity of potassium? Oh, 0 0.02 molar lang din kasi 1 is to 1 yung ratio nila. How about the bromide ion? 0 0.02 molar din kasi 1 is to 1 yung coefficient nila. Oh, ngayon, meron din tayong additional na sodium sulfate. So, yan. So, it will produce two moles of sodium ion and sulfate anion. So, what will be the molarity of sulfate ion? It will be 0 0.02 molar. Bakit? Times 2 kasi sa coefficients. Okay? And for sulfate ion, that will still be equal to 0 0.01. Okay. So, for us to get the ionic strength, we will just add all the ionic species. No? Pagsama-samahin lang natin yung ionic species natin. So that is equals to mu equals one half. Okay. Let's have potassium muna. So we have the molarity of potassium times its charge squared. So times the charge of the potassium ion squared plus the Polarity of bromide ion times the charge of the bromide ion squared plus the molarity of sodium ion times the charge of sodium ion squared plus the molarity of sulfate ion times the charge of the sulfate ion squared. Okay, so pinagsama-sama lang natin lahat ng ions natin. And what's next? Ibu plug in na natin sila. So mu is one half of potassium molarity. So that is 0 0.02 molar times 1 squared. Positive 1 yung charge, eh, di 1 squared lang yun. Plus for bromide, that's 0 0.02 molar times negative 1 squared. Okay? Plus, yung kay sodium, we have 0 
molar sodium times its charge squared plus oh, in case sulfate we have 0 0.01 molar times negative 2 squared okay solve natin kaya naman to i mental na right di na kayo mag calculator okay so we have what's 0 0.2 uh, one point, what's 0 0.02 times 1 squared edi 0 0.02 lang din yan what's 0 0.02 times negative 1 squared oh, negative 1 square mo yan it becomes positive times 0 0.02 0 0.02 pa rin yan but the next one, still 0 0.02. And the last one, oh, what's negative 2 square? It is 4 times 0 0.01. So it will become 0 0.04 molar. Oh, pag sama na natin. Mm, 2, 4, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So this will be 0 0.1 divided by 2. So this will be 0 0.5 molar in total. So this is the ionic strength of this mixture of uh, solutions. So yun yung kanilang ionic strength in total. Okay? So ano nga ba, para saan nga ba tong ionic strength? Sabi natin kanina, the higher the ionic strength, the greater the diverse ion effect is. No? So, kapag mas mataas yung ionic strength, the more the equilibrium is shifted. Okay? So, ganun lang. Okay. So, yan. The higher the ionic strength, the more our equilibrium will be shifted. Yung kasi yung unang requirement. So, kapag mas mataas yung mu na nasolve mo kanina, mas malaki yung effect niya sa solution. Okay? So, ganun lang. Ngayon, di ba, sa equilibrium, wala yung, ano, wala yung diverse ions, no? So, that means there's something wrong with our equilibrium writing, no? Kasi affected sila ng ibang ions, no? Tapos wala sila dun sa equilibrium constant. Ibig sabihin nun, we have to revisit the equilibrium again, Okay? So, magbabalik tanaw ulit tayo sa equilibrium at babaguhin natin siya. Okay? Uh, babaguhin natin ulit. So, let's talk about the ionic activity and the activity coefficient. Okay? So, since our equilibrium constant is that nas... Ano uh, 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 Nabubulula ka. So, since our equilibrium constant, it does not include... Any effects, uh, any effects of ionic strength, that means there's something to be done sa ating equilibrium constant. May kailangan tayo baguhin sa equilibrium constant. Paano yun? So, instead of writing the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, we will instead express the equilibrium constant in terms of activities. Okay? So, instead of just the concentration, we will write the activity. Because sabi kanina sa first slides natin, activity, yun yung ano, affected kapag may ionic, ano tayo, may other ionic species, ba? So, instead of just the concentration of your equilibrium species, we will now include the activity na. Kasi dun sa activity expression, kasama na dun yung Diverse ion effect. Okay? So, yun. So, babaguhin natin yung way ng pagsulat ng equilibrium constant, ha? And activity is equal to the molarity times the gamma. What is gamma? Gamma is the activity coefficient. Okay? Okay, so, ganun lang. So, bakit nga ba molarity lang yung nilalagay natin sa equilibrium constant? Kasi last chapter, ganun lang, eh, di ba? molarity lang nilalagay natin because our assumption is that our species are ideal no ibig sabihin wala yung ano wala yung ionic sphere nila no wala siyang hydration sphere so ibig sabihin noon hindi siya affected by other ions sa paligid okay. yun kasi yung assumption natin that's why we write the 
equilibrium constant in terms of the concentration only. Because we assume the species are ideal. Pag sinabing ideal, the activity coefficient gamma is equal to 1. Okay? So that is equal to 1. So kapag 1 yan, edi molarity na lang ilalagay mo talaga, di ba? However, the reality is not that, no? So, hindi ganun yung reality. Ano meron? May ionic sphere ang ating ions. And as a result, pwedeng mag-interact doon yung diverse ions. So, we have to include the gamma. We have to include the ionic activity coefficient. Okay. Kasi eh, hindi yun yung ideal form talaga. Yun yung real form ng ating ions. Okay. Gamma is a factor used describing the departure of ideal behavior for a reaction mixture. So, yan. So, it is a coefficient that is usually less than 1. No. So, it tells us gano ka deviated yung ating activity from the molarity. So, in order for us to express the effect of ionic strength on the concentration of species, we calculate its activity with the use of activity coefficient, which is given in units of gamma. Okay. So, para makuha mo yung mismong activity ng ion sa solution mo, you just need to multiply its molarity by the gamma or the activity coefficient. Okay. So, that means, in writing the equilibrium constant, hindi lang dapat siya K equals concentration stop stuff. Okay. Hindi lang dapat siya concentration stuff, stuff. No, bakit? We are neglecting the gamma, yung activity coefficient. So that's why the more correct form of equilibrium is written as this. That's the K plus the new equilibrium constant, K prime, that's equals to the activity of the product over the activity of the reactants. I forgot to type the equation here. Okay. So suppose you have this equation. The correct version of the equilibrium, including the activities, are at all. Okay. So that's the activity of the products divided by the activities of your reactants. And what's activity? Activity is equals to Concentration times the gamma. So, yan. In-expand ko lang dito. Concentration, gamma. Concentration, gamma. Okay. And yung mga concentrations, pwede natin sila pagsama-samahin into the original K times the gamma. Okay? So, ano lang yung point natin dito? The way we write equilibrium constant is wrong. No? Because it is too ideal. We assume that there are no ionic atmospheres. No? That's why molarity lang nilalagay natin. We neglect the gamma. But in reality, gamma or the activity coefficient plays a role. So included dapat siya. Why? Because of the ionic sphere. No? Kailangan isama mo siya doon. Para ma-explain natin yung diverse ion effect. Okay? So ganun. So that's mean, that means the more correct form of the equilibrium constant is eta. Okay? So ganun. So ibig sabihin ba niyan, sir, simula ngayon, ganyan na yung aming equilibrium constant? Hindi. No. Bakit? Kasi itong topic na to, medyo complicated to sa calculations. That's why, after this topic, babalik ulit tayo sa generic equilibrium. No? So ngayon lang tayo mag activity ha? Baka isipin nyo hanggang dulo. Oh. Ganito na yung equation natin. No, hindi na. We will assume again sa next chapter na ideal lahat. Okay. Isipin natin ideal na naman lahat. No? So sa ngayon lang tayo magaganito kasi we are talking about diverse ions. So yan. So this is the more correct form. So let's try to practice. No? For the reaction of calcium sulfate, no? This is the dissociation of calcium sulfate. Okay, so the correct form of the equilibrium constant ay dapat in terms of the activities. Okay, so that's the activity of calcium, that's the activity of sulfate. Okay, 
expanding activities that is equal to molarity times gamma, the activity coefficient, molarity times the activity coefficient of sulfate ions. Okay. And remember that KSP is equal to the concentration of calcium 2 plus times the sulfate ions. No? Ano tong KSP again? Ito ay yung solubility product. Ito yung generic K natin. So since may mga molarity tayo dito, pwede natin sila pagsamahin at isulat na KSP na lang. Okay? So this tells us that K is different with K prime. Okay? The K prime includes the gamma. It includes the activity coefficients. Pag KSP lang, pag K lang, concentration lang yan. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, magbabago yung ating equilibrium constant talaga. So, let's try to write the solubility expressions for the following salts, including activity coefficients. We have here lanthanum 3 sulfate and we have copper 3 sulfate. Okay? So let's try to determine their equilibrium constant with activity coefficients. Okay? So we'll start tie with lanthanum 3 sulfate. So we have lanthanum 3 sulfate. What will happen when it dissociates? We will form two lanthanum 3 plus and three sulfate ions. Uh, ito, crisscross lang yan. Okay. So, dapat familiar na tayo dyan. Okay. So, crisscrossing lang yan. Okay. And then, kung ano yung kanilang subscript, yun yung magiging coefficient nila when they turn into ions. So, we have two lanthanum ions with three plus charge. We have three sulfate ion with negative two charge. Paano uli nalaman yung charge? Uh, reverse crisscross lang. San galing yung 3? Kay LA. San galing yung 2? Kay sulfate. ba? So, ganun. So, you write first the expression. Okay. What is the KSP dito? What's the solubility product constant? Yung normal lang. Yung generic K. Okay. So, generic lang. So, that is equal to the concentration of your products lang, di ba, over the reactants. So, ito ay precipitate, ito ay aqueous, ito ay aqueous. Okay. So, for the KSP dito sa equation natin na to, that can be written as the concentration of lanthanum 3 plus squared times the concentration of sulfate anion squared. I, I mean cube pala, sorry. Nakakube yan. So, square for lanthanum, cube for the sulfate. Yan yung normal na KSP. Yung normal na K. So, ngayon, alamin natin yung ano, solubility product with, with activity coefficient. Yun yung K prime. What's the K prime dito? Oh, remember, K prime is in activity, not molarity. So, that's the activity of lanthanum 3 plus squared times the activity of sulfate ions cube. Okay, para lang siya square bracket. Palitan mo lang ng letter A. So, ganun pa rin yung way ng pagsulat. And what is activity? Now recall, activity is equals to molarity times the activity coefficient gamma. So, substitute natin yan dito. So, K prime is the activity, uh, I mean the molarity of lanthanum squared times its gamma squared then. The molarity of sulfate ion cube times the gamma cube. Okay. So, yun yung way ng pagsulat ng bagong K. So, sulat mo muna activity, then express activity in molarity and the coefficient, gamma. So, ito, ito na yun. Ito, ito na yun. Okay. 
Uh, don't forget to distribute the squares. And then, ano alam natin? When we combine the molarities, when we combine the molarities, it is equal to KSP. So we can say K prime is equals to the KSP times the gamma. Okay. So this is the correct form of the equilibrium constant. So pwedeng ito, pwedeng ito. Basta ang gusto lang natin ipakita, ibang iba yung equilibrium constant in terms of activity sa KSP, sa typical K. No? Magkaiba sila. Ano yung difference? May gamma. It accounts for the ionic atmosphere. Okay. May ga gamma value. So, I want you to try this one. Uh, try nyo. So, siguro I'll give you five minutes. No? Then, babalik ako, papakita ko yung answer. So, you first write the... Ano, the dissociation of copper 3 sulfate into ions. Pakita mo muna yung dissociation niya into ions. Then you write the KSP and then later on the K prime. Ano yung difference? Yung KSP yung typical. Yung K prime, ito yung activity. No. Mas social to. Mas complicated. Okay? So, I want you to work on this now. I'll give you five minutes, then I'll come back. I'll give you the answers.
Okay, so let's check your solutions. So, first, nagagawin nyo, you write the uh, you write the dissociation reaction for your salt, no? So, sulat natin, copper 2, so SO4, 3, solid yan. So, ipapattern nyo lang talaga sa ginawa natin. Yung ginawa ko kanina. Kung ano yung, kung paano ko sinulat yung ganun mo rin susulat to. Okay, so ano yung ions na produce natin dito? So, we will produce 2 moles of copper 2 plus, uh, I mean copper 3 plus aqueous, and 3 moles of sulfate ions aqueous. So, ganun lang yung pagsulat. Okay, so kung paano kung sinulat to, ganun din yung pagsulat to. So, hopefully, same tayo na nakuhang solution. Uh, don't worry, may, after this naman, may sasend akong mga worksheets no, para mag-workout kayo dun. Okay, so ganun. So, you write the KSP muna. So, sulit mo muna yung KSP. KSP is equal to the products only kasi solid yung reactant. No? Pag sinabing solubility product, automatically solid ito. Okay? Ganun yung idea dapat. Okay, so let's write the KSV for the products. That's concentration of copper 3 plus squared times the concentration of sulfate ion cube. Okay, so now let's write the K prime in terms of activity. So we say K prime is equals to activity of copper 3 plus squared times the activity of sulfate anion cube. Okay. So, kaya maganda isulat mo muna to bago ka mag K prime kasi ipapattern mo lang naman ito dito. Okay. So, instead of bracket, gagawin mong alpha ano, activity, letter A. So, what is activity again? Concentration times the gamma. So, substitute mo lang yan dyan. So, that's the concentration of copper 3 plus squared Gamma of copper 3 plus squared times the concentration of sulfate ion cube times its gamma, the gamma of uh, sulfate ion cube. Yes, ano gagawin mo? Uh, pwede mo pagsamahin yung concentrations to get KSP. Ito, pati ito, pwede mo pagsamahin kasi equal siya sa KSP. So that is K prime equals KSP gamma copper 3 plus squared gamma sulfate ion cube. So this are the correct way of writing the equilibrium constant. Uh, sir, ano gagamitin namin dyan sa dalawa? Any. Pero mas prefer natin itong nasa taas kasi nakikita natin kung ano yung mga species. No? na yung nasa taas. Although, ito rin, same lang din naman. So, what does this equation tell us? It tells us that K prime is affected by the gamma. They are affected by the equilibrium. I mean, they are affected by the ionic spheres. No? Affected sila ng hydration sphere, ionic sphere. Kaya, magbabago yung K prime natin. And that's the reason why equilibrium is shifted. Yan yung dahilan bakit nagbabago yung equilibrium constant natin when we add diverse ions. O, ba Na-include na natin siya. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, suppose we are going to, ano, ah, uh, Explore more on the activity coefficient. Alamin natin yung properties nila muna. Let's look at what happens sa activity. Bakit siya nineneglect, no? And bakit siya important then? So, alamin natin yung properties. Ito, puro words lang to. Okay. So, basahin natin yung properties of activity coefficient, gamma. Okay. So, the activity coefficient of a species is a measure of the effectiveness with which that species influences an equilibrium. 
ano daw, <laughs> ang gulo ng sentence, ang kinapi ko lang to sa libro eh. Okay, so ang sabi lang dyan is that it tells us the effect of the ionic species in your equilibrium, okay? So pinapakita lang niya kung ano yung effect ng ionic, uh, ionic strength sa ating equilibrium system. In very dilute solutions, that means mababa yung ionic strength approaching zero, the effectiveness becomes constant and the coefficient is unity. When you say unity, one lang yan. So ano sabi dito sa number one? If ang iyong ionic strength, it approaches zero, okay? If your mu approaches zero, ibig sabihin wala kang diverse ions, okay? Uh, kapag wala kang diverse ions, then you can tell that gamma is equal to unity or equal to 1. That's why nineglect natin yung ano, gamma sa previous chapter natin. Kasi we do not assume na may ionic strength. No? Iniisip natin walang ibang ions doon other than our original ions. Okay? So yun yung reason. No, bakit simple version lang yung ginagawa natin last time? Bakit ganito lang? Kasi we assume that activities are not included. No? Or ionic strength isn't a part of the solution. Ibig sabihin, walang diverse ions. Okay? So again, when ionic strength approaches zero, mu approaches zero, gamma becomes unity or nagiging equal siya sa 1. That's why binubura na lang natin 'yan. In solutions that are not too concentrated, the activity coefficient for a given species is independent of the nature of electrolyte and dependent only on the ionic strength na. So it tells us na hindi depende yung activity coefficient sa identity ng species. Instead dependent siya sa ano ionic strength no so ka, ano yan kulare copper 2 plus tapos sulfate ion no so they will have the same uh, activity coefficient okay so ganun lang so hindi siya dependent sa identity no siya ay dependent sa ionic strength no next one for a given ionic strength, the activity coefficient of an ion decreases more dramatically from unity as the charge of the species increases. So, ibig sabihin yan, kapag lumalaki yung charge, the activity coefficient, gamma, decreases more from unity. So, it becomes less than 1. So, ibig sabihin, kapag lumalaki na yung charge ng ating ions, yung gamma natin nagiging less than 1 or it decreases from unity. So that means it affects the equilibrium na. When we have gamma less than 1, equilibrium shifts na. No? Nagbabago na yung equilibrium. Number 4, the activity coefficient of an uncharged molecule is approximately unity no matter what the level of ionic strength. So sabi dyan, if ang ating molecule ay walang charge, gamma is zero. Okay? So that's why yung ating glucose kanina, if you could still remember, yung glucose kanina, stagnant lang yung kanyang K because wala siyang activity. Wala siyang activity coefficient. No? So it means it doesn't affect the equilibrium constant. Okay? Kasi kapag yan ay may ions, dun siya nag-replay nag ng role no, sa ating equilibrium constant. Okay? So kapag ang ating molecule walang charge, gamma is equal to, uh, ay, unity pala, equal sa 1 lang. So walang magbabago, equal pa rin siya sa 1. And lastly, at any given ionic strength, the activity coefficient of the same charge are approximately equal. The small variation among the ions of the same charge can be correlated with the effective diameter of the hydrated ion. So, ano ibig sabihin yan? Yung activity coefficient ng same charge, kunwari, you have copper 2+, plus, barium 2+, plus, no? they are almost the same. 
saan lang sila nagkakaiba? They change depending on the size of the hydrated ions. Okay? So, almost the same. If charges are equal, pag sinulat ko Z, charge yun, ha? Okay. So, gamma are almost the same if Z are equal. Saan lang sila nagbabago? Nagbabago lang sila because of the effective diameter of the hydrated ion. Depending on the size, doon na nagkakaroon ng variation. Okay? Ayan. So, alam na natin yung gamma. So, it tells us if our solution is ideal or not. So, when we say the solution is ideal, gamma is unity or gamma equals 1. Okay? However, if we have diverse ions, okay? If we have diverse ions or actually even common na ions, no? Basta may ibang ion tayo sa solution, then doon na nagpe-play doon na nagpe-play ng role yung activity coefficient, yung gamma. So it deviates from the uh, unity. So basta may ionic strength, doon na nagbabago yung gamma and as a result, the equilibrium constant is changed as well. So, paano ba sinosolve ng mga scientists yung gamma? How do we solve for the activity coefficient? We use the D by Uckel equation. Okay, ah, di ba? Magandang good morning talaga sa atin. No? To solve for gamma, that is negative log of gamma equals 0 0.51 z square square root of mu plus 3.3 alpha square root of mu. Uh, diba? Good morning daw, sabi ng equation. So, what does that tell us? No? So, this is the D by Uckel equation. This is an equation we can use to calculate for the value of gamma. Okay? Ay, may kakabisaduhin na naman kayo. Hindi, wag nyo kabisaduhin to. Kasi may shortcut akong ikuturo mamaya. Okay? So, in order for us to solve for gamma, we have to know the charge of the ion its ionic strength, and the size of the hydrated sphere. Okay? Dun, ito yung sinasabi kanina sa last one. No? That gamma are almost the same. Pag same ng charges, the only subtle difference is the size no? of the ionic sphere natin. Okay? So, di, dito lang sila nagkakaiba kapag same sila ng charge. No? Okay? So, kunwari, you want to solve for the gamma. Your gamma is in the logarithmic function. Paano mo siya papalabasin sa logarithm? You get the anti-logarithm. Okay? So, pakita natin kung paano. Uh, suppose we are now solving for gamma. Uh, you multiply the negative sign on both sides of the equation. So, you will get the log of gamma x equal to negative ng fraction na to, 0 0.51 charge ng x squared square root of mu over 1 plus 3.3 alpha ng x square root ng mu. Okay. Again, yung z, yun yung charge, yung gamma, activity coefficient, mu, ionic strength, alpha, yung size ng molecule, uh, size ng ion in nanometers. Uh, so, minultiply, minultiply ko na yung negative side sa kabila. Then, to get gamma, I will get the antilog lang. So, kunin natin yung antilog. So, that's 10 raised to your functions. Okay? So, gagawin ko, that will be 10 raised to log gamma x equals 10 raised to negative ng fraction na to, 0 0.51 zx square square root of mu divided by 1 plus 3.3 alpha square root of mu. Uh, what's 10 raised to log gamma x? Uh, that's equal to gamma x na lang. Kasi remember, pag yung log, ni-raise mo sa 10. Uh, kapag yung 10, ni-raise mo sa log, nagka-cancel out sila. Okay. So, mawawala na yung logarithm when you do the anti-log. Again, ano yung anti-log? Yung functions mo, gagawin mong exponent ng 10. Ito, gagawin mo exponent ng 10. That's the anti-log. So, this is the equation that we are going to use. 
gamma x equals 10 raised to negative 0.51 charge of species x squared square root of uh, square root of ionic strength all divided by 1 plus 3.3 .3 ionic uh, ionic size and the square root of the ionic strength ulit. Okay. So, ganun lang. If our mu is less than 0 0.1, then the d by u equation becomes this. No? The d by u limiting law or DHLL. So, instead of sanda mo ukal na isolve mo, o pag mababa na ionic strength, you can just simplify it using this equation. So, that's negative log gamma x equals 0 0.51 z square over square root, ah, z square ng x times the square root of mu. So, nawawala na yung factor na 1 plus 3.3 .3 alpha square root of mu. Okay, so, nagiging ganito na lang kasi ka simple. Okay? So, try natin isolve yung activity coefficients using, ano, d by u kel equation. Number one, find the activity coefficient of hydronium ion in 0 0.05 molar sodium chloride solution. Given that the ionic radius of hydronium ion is 900 picometers. Okay. So, if you encounter this problem, first thing first is gawin mo, uh, hanapin mo yung, ano, yung ionic strength. You solve for the mu first. Yun yung una mong gagawin. So, saan mo makukuha yung mu doon sa salt na given? Okay, so we have 0 0.05 molar NaCl. NaCl will dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. So, ano molarity ng Na plus? Okay, 0 0.05 molar lang din. And for Cl, 0 0.05 molar lang din. Kunin mo na yung mu. Mu is 1 half the molarity of sodium ion times its charge squared plus the molarity of chloride ion times its charge squared. Plug in the numbers. The molarity of sodium is 0 0.05 molar times the charge of sodium is 1 squared plus the molarity of chloride ion is 0 0.05 times its charge squared. Solve na to. So, what's 0 0.05 times 1 squared? 0 0.05 lang din yan. What's 0 0.05 times negative 1 squared? Uh, negative 1 squared, 1 lang din yan. So, 0 0.05 pa rin yan. So, what's the e mu? That is equal to 0 0.05 molar lang din. Okay? So 0 0.05 molar lang din yung ating mu. Okay? Kasi ito, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.1 yan pag pinag-add mo. Divided by 2, 0 0.05 ulit. Okay? So, since we now know the mu, we check if we can use the d by u kel or the d by u, uh, d by u kel limiting law. So, kailan gagamitin yung d by u kel limiting law if it is less than 0 0.1, if mu is less than 0 0.1. In our case, 0 0.05 yan. So, we will use the d by u kel law equation lang, not the limiting law. Okay? So, kailan uli ginagamit ang limiting law, yung DHLL, kapag less than 0 0.01 ang mu. Pero if greater than that, you have to use this big equation. So, gamitin natin to to solve for the gamma. Don't worry, uh, may shortcut akong ituturo mamaya. Ha? Hindi naman always magaganito tayo. Uh, gusto ko lang ipakita yung essence ng equation. Paano siya gamitin? Okay? So, we know that mu is equal to 0 0.05 molar. Okay? So, ngayon, gamitin na natin yung d by u equation. Uh, solving for gamma x. Okay? So, let's solve for the gamma ng hydronium ion. Hydronium ion kasi hinahanap dito. 
So that will be 10 raised to negative. And a number done? 0 0.51 z square ng x. No? Ang species na gusto natin ay yung hydronium ion. So that will be? Uh, hydronium ion yung gusto natin. So that will be z h plus squared. Yung charge ng hydronium ion. So lahat ng x dito, papalitan mo ng h plus. So yun yung sabi dito, h plus gusto nyo. Yun. So, sige. Pagbigyan. Square root of mu all divided by 1 plus 3.3 alpha ng hydronium ion, yung size ng hydronium ion, square root of mu. Ano susunod? Uh, plug in na tayo ng numbers. So let's solve for gamma ng H plus. Up, ang haba ng aking vinculum. So that will be 10 raised to negative. Uh, plug in na tayo. 0 0.51. What is the charge of hydronium ion? Positive 1. So plus 1 lang yan. Squared. Then square root of mu. So square root tayo ng activity coefficient. 0 0.05. Okay, nasa baba. 1 plus 3.3 alpha. So, what is alpha? Alpha is the ionic radius. No? And that is given as 900 picometers. Kaso, ang gusto sa atin ay nanometers. So, how do you convert nanomet uh, picometers to nanometers? Oh, easy lang. Okay. So, paano yun? You just divide picometer by 1,000 to get the nanometers. No? So, ganun lang. So, 1,000, 1 nanometer is 1,000 picometers. No? So, we convert 900 pm to nanometer. Oh, you just divide it by 1,000. 900 pm, 1 nanometer, 1,000 picometer. Cancel yan. So, that is equal to 0 0.9 nanometers. This is our alpha. Uh, again, yung picometer, you just divide it by 1,000 to get the nanometer. Okay, so alpha H plus is 0 0.9 nanometers. Then another square root of the mu. Okay, oh, use your calculator to solve for gamma. Di na kaya yan i-mental. Uh, two decimal places lang tayo pag ganito. That will be 10 raised to negative 0.51. One square is just one. Times the square root of 0.05. One plus 3.3. Times the 0.9 nanometer. Square root of gamma. Ay, square root of mu, rather. So, gamma is calculated to be equal to 0 0.85. No? So, yan yung ating value for gamma. For H+, plus, when we have an ionic strength equal to 0 0.05. So, yun, ito yung sinasabi na nagde-deviate siya sa unity. Kapag may ionic strength ka, your gamma deviates from unity. It becomes less than 1. So, ibig sabihin nun, mayroon tayong diverse ion effect. Pero imagine nyo, if you do not have this, ano, this diverse ion, kapag wala kang, ano, pag wala ka na ito, kunwari, tubig lang yan, what's your ionic strength kapag tubig lang yan? Zero. So, kapag zero yung ionic strength mo, saan equal to? Equal to sa 1. Okay. Itong gamma magiging equal yan sa 1. Okay. Kasi kung zero to, edi itong buong fraction na to magiging zero. What's 10 raised to zero? 1. Okay. So, magiging 1 yan. If we do not have diverse ions, kaso sa problem natin ngayon, meron. So, we have to include that. Okay. So, that means gamma is less than one or in our case 
Uh, let's try another one. Then ipapakilala ko na yung shortcut. Okay. Para mas madali ang buhay. Uh, mag pahirapan muna natin sa sarili natin. Find the activity coefficient of sodium ion in 0.005 molar sodium chloride solution given the ionic radius of sodium is 450 picometers. Again, picometer, gagawin mo na nometer yan. Uh, so, ano una mong gagawin? Hanapin mo yung ionic strength, mu. So, again, mu is one half, the sum of the concentration and the charge squared. No. So, we have 0 0.005 molar NaCl. It will dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. So, what will be the concentrations of sodium and chloride ions? So, 0 0.005 lang then because of stoichiometry. So, plug in natin yan sa equation for mu. Mu is one half. The, the concentration of sodium ion times its charge squared plus the concentration of chloride ions times the charge of chloride ions squared. That's one half equals to 0 0.005. Okay. Um, kalang. The zero point zero zero five zero point zero zero five molar times what's the charge of sodium? Positive one squared. Plus yung kay chloride ion naman zero point zero zero five molar times the charge of the chloride ion negative one squared. Okay. Pag-add na natin yan. So, that will be one half of what's 0 0.005 times 1 squared. And it's 0 0.005 lang din yan. What is negative 1 squared? Add 1 lang din yan. So, 1 times 0 0.005 is 0 0.005 lang din. What is this equal to? Ah, oh, ito. Saan to equal? Add sa 0 0.005 molar lang din. Okay, kasi pag may nag-add mo to, 0 0.005, 0 0.005, may yung 0 0.01 yan. Divide mo yan sa 2, you will get 0 0.005 ulit. No? Babalik ka lang ulit sa dati. Okay, so our mu is 0 0.005. Ah, sulat ko lang na lang dito. So our calculated mu is 0 0.005. Molar. So, since ang ating mu, ang ating activity, uh, ay, yung ionic strength natin is 0 0.005, ano gagamitin natin? Dibayukel or the Dibayukel limiting law? Yung Dibayukel limiting law na lang. Okay? So, kapag Dibayukel limiting law, mu is less than 0 0.01 dapat. And meron tayo 0 0.005. Eh. So, less than 0. 1 yun. So, let's use the Dibayukel uh, limiting law. This negative log gamma x equals to 0.5 times the charge squared square root of mu. So, ito na yung gamitin natin. So, use Dibayukel limiting law. Negative log ng gamma x equals to 0 0.51 zx square square root of mu. Okay, so ito na lang gamitin natin. So again, gamma yung sinusolve natin na sa loob yan ng negative log function. So gagawin mo, you multiply both sides by negative 1. Then you get the antilog. Okay, so basically you just raise the number by uh, 10. Ay, yung 10 i-raise mo sa function. And then, plug in natin yung info natin. So, that is 0 0.51. What is the charge of sodium? The charge of sodium is positive 1. 
So, lagay natin positive 1 for sodium. Okay, so sodium yan. And then, the square root of mu is kung ano yung ano natin, activity coefficient. 0 0.005. So, we can now solve for gamma. Point fifty one charge squared. I forgot the squared. Okay, so that's one squared times square root of point zero zero five. So our gamma for sodium. Okay, so our gamma for sodium plus is zero point ninety two. So it is somehow deviated from unity. So it is less than 1. Bakit naging less than 1 yung gamma natin? Because of the presence of diverse ions. No? May diverse ion na tayo sa solution. Eh. Pero kung nag-start tayo with water, wala tayong ganitong problema. So, mala, naglagay ng, naglagay ng asin eh. Ang ka-problema tayo. Okay? So yan, so gamma is less than 1 na. So, yan. So, imagine nyo, if gagawin natin to for the whole chapter, maluloka na kayo siguro. No? Ang stressful eh. Ang dami na namang pinapasolve ni sir. No? Ganun yung mga comments niya. So, may shortcut. Ano yung shortcut? Yung mga gamma, nakalista na kasi. No? Pinahirapan ko lang talaga sarili ko today. Okay? So, yung mga gammas natin, they are already tabulated. No? They were solved already by scientists before. So, this was published by Keeland in Journal of America, you know, American Chemical Society in 1937. So, sinold na kasi nila dati pa. No? 1937 pa before World War II. So, ano yung purpose na itong table na to? The purpose of this table is for us to skip this calculation part. Ano na lang kailangan mo gawin? Alamin mo yung activity uh, alamin mo yung ionic strength, then dun sa ionic strength mo, malalaman mo na yung corresponding gamma values. Okay? So, these are our ions. Hanapin mo lang yung ion mo. Hanapin mo kung anong ano, ionic strength meron ka. And whatever is written down here, that's your gamma. Yun na yun. Okay? So, hindi mo na kailangan pahirapan sarili mo sa mga logarithm-logarithm na yan. No? So, for example... The activity, uh, I mean, the ionic strength for the solution is 0 0.05. Ang gusto natin hanapin is yung kay H+. Plus. So, gagawin mo, hanapin mo yung 0 0.05. Ito yun. Sanapin mo yung H+. Plus. Ito yun. So, our gamma is 0 0.86. Tapos na. Tapos ang problema. So, is that what we were able to solve kanina? 0 0.86? Almost. 0 0.85 now. Okay. So, mas accurate lang yun na sa table. Okay? So, ganun. So, yun na. So, instead of doing all this stuff, same lang din tayo na makukuha with this one eh. Alamin mo lang yung ionic strength and then yung species mo. Hanapin mo lang sa table. E yun na yung gamma niya. O, diba? 0 0.85 na kuha natin. In this case, 0 0.86. And that's okay lang. Okay? 0 0.01 lang naman eh difference. Eh. Okay. So, yan. Oh, malapit, na. How about itong kay sodium? So, the ionic strength is 0 0.05. Uh, 0 0.005. Ano kaya yung gamma ni sodium? Hanapin mo, 0 0.005. So, dito tayo titingin. So, ito. 0 0.005. Tapos, hanapin mo yung sodium. And dito si sodium. The gamma is 0 0.928. Okay? Ano na-solve natin kanina? 0 0.92. Diba? Malapit. Uh, ganun na lang. So, ang purpose lang na table na to is for us not to suffer anymore. <laughs> no more pain. No? Uh, run free. Uh, ganun na lang. Wala nang hinanakit sa dibayukel. So, pinakita ko lang kanina yung purpose ng dibayukel. This is used to calculate for gamma. As long as you know the ionic strength, the charge of the ion na gusto mo, and yung kanyang uh, ionic sphere. Okay? 
So you can use that to solve for gamma. However, thankful tayo kay Keyland et al. No? Sa mga friends din niya. But they created this table so that we will no longer suffer sa calculus, <laughs> sa calculations. So ayan. So kung ano yung gamma, yan na lang yung gagamitin natin. Tapos yan yung ipa-plug in mo sa K prime. Okay. So yan na yung ipa-plug in mo sa K prime. So ito pa yung ibang mga gamma-gamma natin. Okay. So yan. Yan yung mga gamma-gamma. Okay. So yan. Ang gawin natin to, find the activity coefficient of K plus in a solution of 0.5 molar KCl. Um, Magdedebayukal ka pa ba? Hindi na. No? Huwag ka na magdebayukal. Huwag mo na pahirapan sa sarili mo. Kasi may table na tayo eh. Okay. So let's solve for this. Activity coefficient of K plus. So before ka magpunta sa table, hanapin mo muna yung ionic strength. So that's one half the charge of uh, one half the molarity of K plus times the charge of potassium squared. Plus the molarity of Cl minus times the charge of Cl minus squared. Okay. So if we have 0 0.5 molar KCl. Ano yung molarity ng ions natin? Ng K at Cl ions? That will still be 0 0.5 molar and 0 0.5 molar then. So mu is 1 half. Uh, 0 0.5 molar times 1 squared. Yun yung charge ng potassium, positive 1. Then molarity ng chloride, 0 0.5 molar times negative 1 squared. So, all in all, mu is equal to 0 0.5 pa rin. Okay? So, pwede nyo isolve yan, pero 0 0.5 yan. So, since our mu is 0 0.5, we will look sa column na 0 0.5 molar. So, tingin tayo sa column ng 0 0.5. So, in our case, Wala siya dito. Ang pag wala pala siya dito, i-debayukal mo yan. Natypo ako dito, sorry. Ito rin pala yung problema ko last year. Uh, this should be 0 0.05. Kasi kapag wala doon sa, ta sa table, most likely magde-debayukal ka. <laughs> okay. So again, correction lang. 0 0.005 yan. So correction lang yan, ha? Uh, di ko pala na-edit. Ito din kasi gamit ko last year. So, yan. Pinahirapan pa lalo sarili, no? Okay. So, yan. O, correction yan, ha? Pero kapag wala talaga dyan, eh, di mag-ano ka. Di ba, yukel? So, ito yung mu natin. 0, 0, 5. Okay. O, pwede na natin uli magamit yung table, no? di ba? So, dito tayo, hanapin natin yung potassium ion. Bakit potassium ion? Yung kasi sabi dito eh, hanapin daw yung K, uh, hanapin daw yung gamma ni K+. Plus. So, look at this column, hanapin natin yung kay potassium. O, oh, ito, nakita ko na. So, for potassium, that's equal to 0 0.805. No? So, yun na yung gamma ni potassium. Gamma ni K plus is 0 0.805 according to the table. Yan, tapos na. Uh, let's have the next one. Find the activity coefficient of calcium 2 plus in a solution of 3.3 millimolar calcium chloride. So kapag millimolar, that's 1,000 of a mole. No? 1,000 of a molar. So, di-divide natin yan sa 1,000. Okay? So, ganun lang. Mm. So, pakita natin yung equation. Calcium chloride. Naging calcium 2 plus yan. And 2Cl minus. So, what's 3.3 divided by 1,000? Kakalik ko para di ako magkamala. So, that will be 0 
Yung 0.033 molar. So, if you have 0 .03, uh, 0.033 molar for calcium chloride, ano yung molarity ng ions natin? So, for calcium, since 1 to 1 lang yung stoichiometry niyan, that will be 0 0.0033 lang din. For Cl, times 2 yan kasi may coefficient na 2. So, that will be 0 0.0066. So we can now solve for mu, that's one half, the concentration of calcium times its charge squared plus the concentration of Cl minus times the charge squared. Paki plug in na lang. So that is 0 0.0033 times charge ng calcium is positive 2 square. Plus, kay chloride, um, 0 0.066, uh, 0 0.0066 times negative 1 squared. Uh, solve na lang natin. Ita-type ko na sa calcium, ang dami na nakalagay eh. 0 0.0033. 2 square plus 0 0.0066 times negative 1 square so that's equal to 0 0.0099 okay, pag ganyan 0 0.099 na you can round it off no? so pwede na i-round off yan kapag 99.99 so, pwede na yan i-round off. So, this can be rounded off to 0 0.01 molar. Allowed yun. Okay. Kasi kapag, ano, kapag magpapakastrict tayo dito, pag di tayo mag-round off, magdidibayukal ka. Diba? Huwag na. Ang effort eh. So, ito na. We round it off to 0 0.01 molar. So, ngayon, tingin tayo sa table. 0 0.01 molar. So, dito tayo titingin. So, we will look at this column. So, anong ion gusto natin? Oh, calcium 2 plus. So, ito mga positive 1 charge. Okay. So, tingin tayo sa next table. Anong row dito yung ano? 1, 2, 3. So, dito bito daw yung 0 0.01. Okay. Yan. So, dito yung 0 0.01. Dito tayo titingin. Nagkadugtong yan eh. Pinutol ko lang kasi di kasi sa PowerPoint. Uh, so, hanapin daw natin dito sa column na to yung calcium. Uh, dito yung calcium. Nakita ko na. So, the gamma is equal to 0 0.675. No? Ayan na yan. Gamma ng calcium 2 plus is 0 0.675. Okay, so yun na yun. Ah, diba, tapos na yung problema natin sa pag-solve ng gamma. Okay, so we are now able to solve for the gamma. Okay. So, ganun lang. So, hindi ka na magdibayukel, ha? Okay, so huwag na kayo magdibayukel. Instead, ang gawin nyo na lang ay ganito, ano? So, hanapin nyo na lang yung ionic strength and then look at the table. Okay. So, kung ano yung lumabas sa table na gamma, yun na yung gagamitin nyo. Yun na yung ipa-plug in mo sa K prime. Yun yung ipa-plug in mo sa K prime dito. Yun yung mga ilalagay mo sa mga gamma-gamma na yan. Uh, lagay mo 0 0.75, 0 0.6, no? So, on so forth. Ipa-plug in mo na yan dyan. Okay. So, ganun. Yung mga gamma na sinasolve natin, ipapasok mo siya dito sa equation natin. Okay. Uh, let's try this one. Calculate the activity coefficient of H plus when mu is equal to 0 0.025. Okay? So, kunwari, yung kanina kasi yung problem ko dito, lumagpas kasi ako sa ano, nasa table. So, kapag lumagpas ako sa nasa table, pwede na ako mag-dibayukel. 
Pero what if ganito? So, 0.025. So, pasok ako sa range ng table kasi 0.025 eh. So, asan yung 0.025? Asan kaya yan? Ang 0.025 ay somewhere here. So, nasa gitna yung 0.025. So, nasa gitna nito. Okay. So, kapag in-between values yung, yung ano, ano, ionic strength, pwede mo naman i-extrapolate. No? Pwede mo kunin. Okay. So, paano tayo nag extrapolate ng y or interpolate ng gamma using this table? Ganito lang gagawin nyo. You list the... Activity coefficient and the gamma. So, lista mo yung mga mu and gamma. So, ano yung mga nasa table? Di ba in between siya sa 0.1 and 0.5? 0.05. O, lista mo yun. So, 0.01, 0.05. In between that, you get the 0.025. Ano yung gamma ng H plus kapag 0.01? Sabi dito, 914. O, sulat mo dyan. 0.914. Kapag 0.05 daw, 0.86. Ang tanong, ano daw kapag 0.025? O, pwede na tayo dito mag-linear interpolation. So, we will use this equation to solve for the missing term here. So, ano yung unknown interval ng gamma? Okay. So, basically, ang gagawin mo lang dyan is ganito. So, kapag unknown interval gamma, so, yung highest gamma minus the unknown. Okay. So, 0.914 minus gamma. Then, ano yung delta gamma? Yung delta gamma is yung highest minus the lowest. Ganun. So again, kapag unknown interval, highest minus the question mark. Pag delta gamma, highest minus the lowest. Okay. So ganun din sa mu. So, ano yung known mu interval? So, di ba, dito ginawa natin this minus this, no? 0.914 minus question mark or minus the gamma unknown. So, sa mu, ganun din gagawin natin. 0.01 minus the corresponding mu na hinahanap natin. Okay. So, kailangan... Ito, pati ito, nasa same row dapat sila. Ha? So, highest minus the question mark, highest minus the hinahanap. Okay? So, yun yung nasa numerator. Then, yun nasa denominator yung highest minus lowest. No? Okay, for the delta mu, that's the highest minus the lowest. Or you can use shift solve no? to solve for the gamma. Or hopefully, napanood nyo na yung shift solve. That's the calculator technique. Pero kung, ano, kung hindi nyo pa gamay, edi okay lang din naman. You can manually solve it using algebra. Pero ako mag-shift solve na ako para mabilis. Kasi malapit na matapos yung ating class. Okay, so using shift solve and using linear interpolation, I was able to extract that gamma when mu is 0 0.025 is equal to 0 0.89894 actually. So, in, so using linear interpolation, I was able to solve that gamma 
of hydronium ion if mu is 0.025 is 0.894. So instead of me using ano, instead of me using the Debye-Yukel equation, naglinear interpolation na lang ako. Pero if you want to be more sure, pwede kayo mag ano, Debye-Yukel na lang. Okay? So that will be our discussion for today no? So almost na cover na natin lahat. So ang kulang na lang natin is yung last part, yung application to equilibrium problems. So what I want you to do na lang is mag upload ako ng ano, worksheet dito na. No? So nandoon yung mga pwede nyo pag-practicean sa pag-solve ng mu at ng gamma. Okay? So upload ko yon mamaya. So you can work on that so that Sa susunod nating meet, magbibigay na ako ng application to equilibrium problems. And siguro most likely dito sa part na to, asynchronous na tayo. Na. So, mag-upload na lang ako ng video na sinusolve ko tong problems na to. Okay? So that you will have more time to review for the midterms next week. So that means wala tayong meeting next week. Kasi asynchronous na tayo nun. So, upload ko na lang yung video ko dito sa pagsagot dito. Okay? So, I want you to practice more on solving for gamma-gamma na lang. Okay? So, yeah. So, that will be all for today. Again, a copy of the PowerPoint is uploaded sa discussions. And then, a copy of this video will be uploaded on YouTube as well. No? So, wala na tayong meeting next week. No? So, magkikita na lang tayo. Uh, after midterms for the consultation. Bakit? Kasi asynchronous tayo next week. No? So, upload ko na lang yung pagsagot ko dito. Sundan nyo na lang. Okay? And don't worry. Dadalian ko na yung quiz dito kasi super dali. No? Kasi ang papa, yung mu natin, yung mu values, may kita mo na siya sa table. Okay? So, so ganun. Hindi ko na kaya papahirapan. No? So, yeah. so, I'll see you again next meeting. So, hopefully... Okay lang naman kahit onti lang na grasp niyo today kasi mahirap talaga tong topic na to. Pero hopefully by the time na panoorin niyo to uli, no, mas ma digest niyo na yung idea. Okay? So a copy of the video will be uploaded on YouTube. I'll see you again next time, no. So stay safe and I'll see you again no? after the midterms. Asynchronous tayo next week ha. So bye-bye and ingat.